So there's plenty, many, many issues of corruption, and very few people are saying anything about it. You do have these articles out there, but you got to dig deep and you got to research them. It's not like the media is making a big deal, big deal about it and focusing on it, right? Um, so you have, um, you know, this uh, officer, uh, LMPD officer Joe Burden, he arrests a woman and says, show me your vagina. When you look at crime times, you see in crime times how they have, you know, the glamour shots, right? They're making fun of the women, like, oh, glamour shots. Look at these pretty women who got beat up or got, you know, thrown into office and or got thrown into jail. And it's a big fucking joke to them, right? And it's, it's a bunch of psychopaths. The, um, the police officers are clinically psychopathic, uh, just like the politicians and the judges. And people don't have empathy, empathy with others. They don't give a shit. They're, they're mean human beings. Borderline Nazis, they're not Holocaust and Jews yet, but the oppression is very much there. And you have the uh, pussy ride who went to prison, and they said that they was getting gynecological examinations every day. So you get molested and raped in prison today, um, and, but it just shows you how basically the whole system is just fucking against the Russian people. And the whole system here in Louisville is against the Louisvillian people. The Louisvillian people are under attack, and they're under attack constantly by the LMPD. Joe Burden, you know, it, uh, he burdens other people by saying, hey, I'm going to throw you in jail unless you show me your vagina. That could be your mother. That could be your daughter. If somebody was, you know, Joe Burden, how would he feel if his daughter is being shaked down and saying, hey, I'll let you go if you just show me your vagina? He would not like that. He would probably do something about it, right? Just reverse the roles. That's how you can tell if justice is fair. Um, if the case is fair, you just put the other person in the other person's spot. Is that fair? You know, you have... Um, uh, 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 Clifford Lewis Jr., who was just shot, right, in the White Owl parking lot, being jumped by out of nowhere. But if there was a police officer that was in a car and he had just a bunch of black men with guns pointing a gun at him, how would have he reacted? Would he have just sat there? Would he have just done nothing? Would he have tried to drive away? Um, you know, and that's what Clifford Lewis did. He tried to drive away. He tried to flee, and then they shot him as they tried to fly, flee away. So if you're a police officer and you're sitting in the vehicle and you're getting jumped by everybody, the plane closed you know, black men, and they have guns pointed at you, and you drive away, how are you in the wrong? Like, what did you do that was, in, that you, they didn't say they were police, they didn't identify themselves, they were just random members of the public, switch the cases around, if you can switch the cases around, and you still think that the, you know, the person A hurt person B, and it doesn't matter if you, you know, how you switch the things around, if the person, the aggressor is still the aggressor, and the person is still the victim, then, you know, then you know that it's just, if one person hits another person, and that's it, that person's a criminal, no matter if they're wearing a cop, you know, a badge uniform or if they're a regular citizen. The law is the law and everybody's supposed to be underneath the law if the rule of law actually applies. But it, and it does in real democracies, but I'm not so sure if this is a real democracy and I'm not so sure um, if, if the rule of law even is even, um, uh, even if it is, is still around. I don't know if anybody believes in the rule of law. The police officers talking on the cell phone, they're speeding, they're killing people, you know, they're show, making women show their vaginas to them, they're throwing innocent people into prison for many years, they're getting pissed off if anybody tries to point out the wrongdoing by throwing innocent people in prison. They're not doing what's right, they're not going for, you know, um, they're, they're going for law and order, they're not for going for justice or goodness or morality or principles or ethics. They have no ethics, they have no morals, they have no principles. Um... So some of the officers on the list were charged with crimes, but eventually were found not guilty. Some of the other officers were not criminally charged, but were disciplined internally, like Derek Leachman. And Derek Leachman, he was the one that had uh, killed Robert Abernathy. He was one of the three of the five gunmen who had shot Rodney Abernathy. So Officer Kevin Talby, for example, was found to have given a false testimony during a suppression hearing on October 21, 2010, according to his disciplinary file, and the list turned over to the prosecutors, which WDRB obtained under open records request. In July 2012, Steve Conrad suspended Talby for 30 days, telling the officer in his disciplinary Larry he was not being fired because he had no other major disciplinary hearing, had good work ethic, and was truthful during the internal and criminal investigation. The new policy requires police to notify each prosecutor's office. From there, prosecutors would decide whether new evidence requires them to uh, notify the department. LMPD officer Charles Moore. He says, one judge has already ruled that a defense attorney cannot bring up an officer's lengthy disciplinary record, which includes several instances of dishonesty. 
So if they have a rap sheet, they're not allowed to bring it up. They're not allowed to mention it in court that they're a dishonest fucking criminal prick. Like what? What are the? What are the? What are they thinking? I have no idea what they're thinking. They're just covering up their buddies' asses. Not only did they give that man a job, and they're paying his entire livelihood so he could do you know whatever criminal thing he wants to do on the streets just because you hang out with him, had a couple beers with him, and you think he's a good person. Now quit covering up your buddies' crimes. You're you're good people. And if somebody breaks the law, it doesn't matter if it's your friend or not your friend, you know, they're supposed to get arrested. Especially if it's some of the shit, you know, sexual assault, murder, rape, you know, these things are crimes whether you're a cop or not. In 2011, Jefferson Circuit Court, Judge Barry Willett ruled that a defense attorney cannot mention Officer Charles Moore's, uh, Moore's lengthy disciplinary record, so they couldn't even mention Charles Moore was a fucking bad piece of shit. Uh, defense attorney Chastity Beal wants to have Moore testify about his more than 800 page internal police file. So Charles Moore's got 800 pages of internal documents saying he's a piece of shit. He's suspended from the force over seven times, reprimanded on another eight occasions, and being the subject of four criminal investigations. So, oh my God, this motherfucker just keeps on dodging. He's a, he's a cat with nine lives, right? He just keeps dodging investigation after investigation, just, you know, trumped up charges or uh, making up trumped up charges, and nobody seems to give a shit. Nobody seems to be, um, you know, j truth and justice. Is, is no, That's not the point. It's not about ethics. It's not about principles. It's not about morality or ethics. It's about... Um, covering up their own, you know, it's about them doing as the fuck as they please, hurting whoever the fuck they want to hurt, and then covering their asses up when somebody says, hey, you're hurting innocent people and you need to stop. How dare you speak out against us? You should have done it internally. That's what Steve Conrad said um, when they found out that Baron Morgan went to the Innocence Project because you have Susan King who's in jail right now um, because she's innocent. She's innocent, and he tried to say, you know, this is some bullshit. <coughs> but Stephen Conrad didn't give a shit. It's not important. Who gives a fuck? We're not here to actually promote law and justice, you know? We're just here to fucking do as the fuck as we're criminals. So we're criminals for the bankers and the corporate establishment, and we are, you know, we can do anything we want to the people. We just protect the bankers, the politicians, and the judges, and we're fine. LNPD officer Chris Thurman, um, he, for example, he's got more than 100 pending cases, including several arrests for drunk driving and at least three murder or manslaughter cases in which he is the lead officer. So you have a DUI drunkard, right? Chris Thurman, he's got a DUI. How many DUIs did I see in the crime times? I mean, that was, that was probably about, you know, 100 of them or so. So you get all these DUI cases. They didn't hurt nobody. Um, but, you know, there's, they're not holding the other people by the same standards. I would I would love to you know um, investigate some of these police officers check to see what you know you want to uh, drug test the people that's on welfare and that's getting on food stamps well let's drug test all the public officials are the police using the money to purchase drugs and to get into the illegal activities that they supposedly say are wrong and how hypocritical they're not living by their own standards right so they're clearly hypocrites and uh, what can you do with a hypocrite somebody that says you need to live right and they don't live right by themselves. So, you know, essentially they'll keep on getting away with their oppression until somebody points it out to them or somebody stops them. So Chris Thurman, he's got more than 100 pending cases, several involving arrest for drunk driving and three on murder or manslaughter, which he's the lead officer. He's a, oh wait, no, he's not, uh, he arrested other people, my bad. So, but he's on administrative duty for allegedly falsifying a timesheet, claiming overtime he may not have worked. So Thurman's cases have been postponed pending the investigation, but the county attorney said that it may lose some of them. So he lied on the timesheet. He's getting money that he shouldn't be collecting, and he's hurt all these people, right? So how many times has Chris Thurman, like, you know, arrested somebody, and they get their picture taken in crime times, and they all get a laugh and say, ha, 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 look what the fuck we just did. And he's a criminal. He's stealing taxpayer money. Thurman's on administrative duty for allegedly falsifying his timesheet, claiming overtime he may not have worked. According to court records, many of Thurman's cases have been postponed pending the investigation, but the county attorney's office has said it may lose some of them. Derry Kleechman, with three other LMPD presidents, slayed Rodney, uh, Rod, Rodney Abernathy in Chickasaw Park on December 6, 2000. Uh, but Willie Williams never shot anybody. And, um, you know, there's, uh, there, he shot at him over two dozen times. Leachman shot him over two dozen times. Well, who is Derry Leachman? Well, we're going to find out who Derek Leachman is, okay? So this happens in 2000. Fast forward 13 years later, we're going to find out who this 
um, so-called men is. Six times during an armed robbery trial last December, de defense attorney Frank Jewell asked Louisville Metro Police Detective Derek Leachman whether he took photos at the crime scene. Six times Derek Leachman testified under oath he had not. So that's perjury. Six times he perjured himself, but after Jewell's seventh attempt, Derek Leachman finally acknowledged he had taken a crime scene photos, but the pictures were lost, and he didn't want to testify that he had lost the pictures. So, you know, that he might have lost the case right there because he just wanted to lie about something. Um, he didn't want to testify that, he, oh, I, did, I, I, I took the pictures, but I lost them. Man, fuck you. You didn't take pictures, or if you took them, you fucking deleted them. You didn't give a shit about this. A uh, jury later acquitted the defendant, and Leachman's testimony and actions were criticized by the prosecutor and the police department. In July, he was suspended for 30 days for losing evidence and providing misleading testimony during the trial. So, you know, uh, so it turns out a murderer is also a liar. You know, that's not a big surprise. He murders, and if he, he doesn't care for somebody's life, then, of course, he's not going to give a shit about any of the lesser things. Murder is like, you know, murder and rape are like the two worst crimes out there, and if you have no compunction about murdering somebody or raping somebody, then you have no compunction about doing anything to that person. Lying to them, assaulting them, robbing them, stealing them. And, you know, what's the difference? Like, I don't know, they can rob other people, but if somebody robs you, they don't stand up. So, I mean, they're the criminals. They're on the same side as the criminals on the street. They're not making this place safer. If anything, they just give an illusion that they're trying to do something, but there's not enough police to stop every crime around here, and we need to learn to, you know, fend for ourselves and stand for ourselves. If you say, hey, don't, the cops want to say, well, just wait for us to get on the scene. No, y'all don't ever help, and you don't give a shit if there's anything happening unless you all come when it's in progress, you know, if something's in progress, or if I have the evidence. If I already have the case for you, then maybe, you know, um, if I had video or something. So as a part of a new police policy, Derek Leachman and more than two dozen police officers whose conduct is pro could be problematic in future ca cases have had their names and disciplinary issues turned over to prosecutors and possibly to defense attorneys at some point. So they're, 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 these police officers need to testify in court what they did. And if they testify in court and they have bad reputations who are liars and assaulters and rapers and murderers, then that lo they lose credibility. And that's the reason why it's important to, for the police to have um, you know, good credibility. They need to be upstanding, great citizens in the community. They, they don't just take the money, beat up people, and go home and you know, get drunk on everybody's tax dollar and laugh about you know, how much crime and shit they get away with. Like, that isn't right. That's not fair. Um, they, if anything, they should be taking some of that money and giving it back to the community. They should be in the community police, and they should get to know the people that they're beating up. And if they actually started, like, shop with the cop, there should be more shop with the cop programs because if they actually did that, they could start a relationship with a young person. And how can you throw a young person's life into prison when you've grown up with that young person? Like, that's, that's the point, you know? And, uh, and hopefully they would sh their humanity would come forth. They saw that kid as a baby, and now they're going to fuck up that baby's life. You guys are fucked up. So, um, the problematic in future cases, they had their names and disciplinary issues turned over to prosecutors and possibly to defense attorneys at some point. Officer Derek Leachman is on paid administrative leave and faces several charges including menacing, wanton endangerment, and disorderly conduct. So what the fuck is going on here? This just happened just recently, right? This is just um, maybe this year or last year. Louisville police officer, or just this month, I think. <laughs> they don't have a date on it, but it's a WDRB story. Louisville police officer is being investigated after claims he pulled a gun on two people at McDonald's. <laughs> so you got Derek Leachman who murdered Rodney Abernathy or shot him two dozen times. Um, Helms, Mr. Helms is the one that shot the kill shot with the, the head wound, but I'm sure he would have died after two dozen shots, right? Derek Leachman is in the park with Rodney Abernathy and just boom, 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 24 times, 24 shots. Right? That's the type of fucking psycho that we have carrying a badge and a gun who's protecting and serving us. And so not only have we seen him murder somebody, but now we're seeing him lie on the stand. Did you take those pictures? Well, yeah. I mean, no. Yes. No. Yeah. What do you want me to say? Um, you know, the fucking truth. That's what we wanted you to say. You took the pictures and you lost them. Supposedly, that's your news story. Or maybe you took the pictures and you kept them, you know, in your closet or something. So he's a murderer, shoots way too many shots, you know, to kill somebody, to stop, you know, to, to end somebody's life. He's lying about things. And now he's in the McDonald's, and he pulls a gun. He pulls a gun out on two people at a McDonald's, right? This is what he, he goes to McDonald's to get himself a fucking Big Mac. 
and um, he pulls out a gun, and uh, pulling out a gun is menacing and wanton endangerment, disorderly conduct. Isn't that just attempting murder? Isn't that brandishing a firearm? Isn't that a, a, a misconduct of official capacity? You know, that's um, there's bigger charges that could be put on him. Menacing? That's all. That's menacing carrying a gun. Out. You know, like they, I, I, a jury had said that you know I was menacing when the cops almost ran into me and hit me with the vehicle and they beat the shit out of me and they want to say I'm menacing because um, when they pulled around I had swung and I had hit um, all uh, uh, Joel Casey in the head I didn't know who he was so you know he about jumped me and so I swung and they said that's menacing right that's menacing so it's menacing self defense is menacing. Um, but we'll find out how Derek Leachman, he can get away with murder, and we'll see if he can get away with pulling a gun out at McDonald's on some innocent folks.